starting, we're going to talk about uh, partially, mo mostly a piece you actually wrote three years ago called The Road to Power, which people can look up in Jacobin um, and getting to some of these kind of strategic questions that we try to explore on the show. But uh, to set the stage for that, can you give us, I think you give the clearest explanation of anybody of the relationship between capitalism and the state and how that relationship works. Yeah, uh, the relationship is basically this, that, that in a capitalist economy, states have the, uh, the promise of being neutral uh, once democratic rights are handed out and states uh, present themselves as arbiters of social interests. And in many politicians' minds, that's exactly what they're doing. But the, in, the structure of the system is set up in such a way that states really have no real alternative but to prioritize the interests of asset holders, of capitalists. In most political debates and in political discussions, like even in the Sanders campaign, the mechanism that's supposed to be behind this bias on the part of the state is the fact that elections are funded by private money. So because the funders and the funder class is rich, um, politicians have to listen to them. And to the extent that elections are funded by private money, that's true. But underneath that is even a more powerful mechanism, which remains in place even if you get rid of private money in the electoral campaign. Even if you have a publicly funded electoral system, it will be a better system. It will be less biased towards capitalist interest, but it will still have no choice but to prioritize those interests nonetheless. And the reason for that is simple. By definition, in a capitalist economy, states don't generate their own revenue. They are dependent on revenue from the economy because the means of production are not owned by the state. In a communist system, the state owns the means of production. It controls them. If it wants to have a bigger budget, more revenue, it can just take its state enterprises and produce more with them, and the profits go straight into the state. In a capitalist economy, all revenues come from means of production, factories, restaurants, warehouses, hotels that are owned by private entrepreneurs. The only way the state gets money is by taxing them. The problem is taxes depend on income generation, and income generation depends on investment by the private sector. So whatever government is in power, whatever it wants to do, whatever programs it's endorsing, right wing or left wing, if it wants to be able to fund those programs, at some point, even if it goes into a deficit, even if it does uh, prime pumping, it's going to have to go back to what the, the revenue source is to be able to raise those funds. The revenue source, the hand on the spigot, is the hand of capitalists. If they decide not to invest, if they're unhappy with you and decide to move their capital, if they're unhappy with you and decide to simply put it into finance, if they're unhappy with you and decide to just sit on it, you end up with a fiscal crisis. So every government, when it comes into power, has to first prioritize the interests of the golden goose, the goose that lays the egg, and that's the capitalist class. What varies from country to country is how much that bias is in fact pronounced, how bad it is. In social democratic countries, because there's a counterweight, that bias is less pronounced. In countries like the US where there's no counterweight, it's complete hegemony, complete um, control by the capitalist class, which is then reinforced by the electoral rules, but it's not itself based on the electoral rules.